Understanding our soils is extremely important. So that's why we need to understand the chemical properties of our soil so that we can produce the best produce we can. So here are the four most fundamental uh, characteristics of soil in terms of chemistry. So we have uh, the nutrients status, the cation exchange of our soil. We also have our soil organic carbon as well as our soil pH. So we'll start with the uh, nutritional profile of our soil. Nutrients, um, especially in our soil, you got to think of those as almost like building blocks of our plants. And so the plants take up these nutrients to build the body of um, the plant. And so we can break down our nutrients into uh, two different categories. We have macronutrients and micronutrients. As the name suggests, macro means large, so we need these nutrients in large supply. And micro um, is the nutrients we need, not in large supplies, uh, just in sufficient amounts so that we can function as usual. It's interesting when, when you think, many people think, you know, macros are oh, more important than the, the microbes and the micros, but they're actually just as important as each other. And if you're missing just one of these micronutrients, your plant doesn't function as well and it's going to be limited by that nutrient. So they're all important, just the amounts uh, change and it depends on the nutrient. And so each of these nutrients will um, have a particular function in our plants. Now also it's important to mention it's a lot more plant nutrients um, than I've just listed here. And it's coming out every uh, day that more and more um, nutrients are essential for plant development. But it might just be in a very small amount. Now when we refer to essential nutrients, it means that the plants firstly can't replace the function that the nutrient plays in the plant. So if a particular nutrient plays the role of building cell walls, like uh, calcium, no other nutrient can replace that nutrient. And so it's essential that the plant has that nutrient in order to, for it to fulfill that function. So if there's none of that nutrient, it then can't do the particular function. There's no substitute. All of our soil chemistry really evolves around these nutrients, how they interact, how they interact with our plants, how the soil, um, the physical parts of our soil interact with these nutrients. Now to some extent, the um, nutritional profile of our soil is largely given by the mineral makeup of our soil. So we have um, soils that are quite um, high in fertility, like our um, clay soils, and then you have soils low in fertility, such as our sandy soils. So typically we have um, a lot of our fertility given by the mineral um, component of our soil. And if we're lacking in any of these, we need to then supply it or rely on our microbes to supply the um, plant nutrition. So one way we can think about the importance of plant nutrients, think of it as like you're building something with Lego. So say for example, we've got chlorophyll here. Chlorophyll is important for capturing uh, light in our plants. This is um, very important for photosynthesis. You can see these squiggly lines here. They're just a carbon backbone for this, um, for this molecule. You'll notice that we have four nitrogen and magnesium. And so if we were to try and build this, but we didn't have magnesium, the compound just wouldn't work. And so, as I was saying before, we need a lot more macros than micros, uh, micros, but they're still just as important as each other. So if we only had three nitrogen, it wouldn't work. If we had no uh, magnesium, then it wouldn't work. And so they're all important and they all need to be available to our plant so that they can build their bodies. So let's go to our soil pH. Now soil pH, one of the massive things about soil pH is that it determines the availability of a lot of our um, soil nutrients. pH in itself is the concentration of hydrogen ions and it is expressed on the pH scale going from one, which is highly acidic, which is a high concentration of hydrogen ions, to a basic um, soil, which is very low in concentration of um, hydrogen ions. And that's expressed as a 14 on the pH scale. It's a reverse logarithmic scale, which means the higher or the more um, hydrogen there is, the lower the score, and it's also logarithmic. So there's a, a factor of 10 difference between each of these. Now each nutrient or element will have a different behavior at different ends of this spectrum. So nitrogen, for example, it's pretty abundant around the seven, which is neutral. But once you go to either end of the spectrum, the availability starts to decrease. It's interesting because um, phosphorus is 
similar, but it spikes here at the end. So the thickness of these lines represent the availability of that nutrient. Potassium is pretty low um, availability when the soil is acidic, but increases as it increases in pH, and iron's the same. Now, all this works with our nutrients, but it also works with um, anti-nutrients such as aluminium. Now, aluminium can become toxic to our plants, and so when we have a really low pH, aluminium increases in its availability and can poison our plants. So sometimes our plants might seem to be deficient in a particular thing. Although that's correct and the plant actually might be deficient, it doesn't mean the soil is deficient itself with that plant nutrient. And so, for example, if we take iron, for example, if our plants are iron deficient, the soil doesn't necessarily need to be iron deficient. It might just have a high pH, which means the iron itself is not available to our plants. And so a management strategy we, that we can do is by lowering the pH, we can increase the availability of iron. Now, the actual chemistry as to why different elements become more and less available at um, different pH is pretty complex, and I don't fully understand it, but as a general rule, here are um, the availabilities with pH. Again, we want to keep our soils between 6 and 7, that's ideal, and that is also where microbes can function the best. Another chemical property of our soil is our cation exchange capacity. You've got to think of this as almost like... Um, a bucket for our soils to hold on to cations. Now cations are nutrients in our soil that have a positive charge. Um, so calcium, potassium, magnesium, sodium uh, to some extent. And so the way our cation exchange capacity works is that we have a negatively charged particle in our soil called a colloid. Now this colloid, as I said, it has a negative charge to it. And so it's going to attract these positively charged ions or they're called cations. And so the, the greater this negative energy within our soil, the greater the amount of cations that can stick to it. And so if you think of like a, almost like a magnet in our soil, um, that's going to have our negative sites, and then we can have our positive cations clinging to that. And so this is usually expressed in centimoles. Mole is just um, a number. Similar to saying like having a dozen eggs, one mole is, it's a pretty large number, but it's just saying that there's X, or there's that many of this particular thing. So a mole in itself is, I think it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So it's a massive number, and it's usually used to describe um, elements and things of those chemical nature. So really small scale, and there's a lot of them. And so instead of saying, you know, there's trillions and trillions and trillions of things in our soil, we say there's a couple of mole. Anyways, it's like it doesn't. So we express our cation exchange capacity as um, centimoles per kilo. So it's per kilo of soil. How many positive things can we stick in that? And so for this one here, uh, for example, it's 12 uh, centimoles per kilo, which means there's basically 12 moles, uh, centimoles of cations that can stick to one kilo of soil. The higher the CEC on your soils, the better. It can hold more nutrients. Um, less is going to be leached away. The lower your CEC, the worse, and often less fertile your soils are. So the only particles that have a CEC are, are clay particles and um, organic matter. Everything else doesn't, so uh, clay. So sand and silt doesn't have anything. And so that's when we have really sandy soils, we don't have much of a cannot exchange capacity. Now this takes us finally to our soil organic carbon. I like to think of soil organic carbon as life within our soil. It supplies so much of these um, characteristics that we need for proper plant functioning. So first we have our chemical benefits. So that's like buffering pH. So it keeps our pH in a correct range. It supplies nutrients. It increases our cation exchange capacity. There's also physical benefits to soil organic carbon such as um, increasing the structure of our soil, uh, increasing porosity, and there's also the biological benefits, which is creating habitat and food for our microbes. But really, in, in this context of chemical characteristics, it, um, again, buffers, supplies nutrients, increases our cation exchange capacity. It also buffers uh, and reduces toxins within our soil. And really, any chemical characteristic that is ideal for our soil, soil organic carbon contributes to that in a positive way. The higher your soil organic carbon, the better for your soils. 
Typically, our soils are pretty low in um, carbon because of years of tillage um, and long periods of lack of plants growing on it. And so soil organic carbon tends to oxidize. We've got a whole video on that if you want to check it out. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. My name is Steele Simmons from Agriculture Explained by AgriSoil. Um, cheers.